Hello guys, welcome to Metten. So in this video, we are going to look at the anatomy of the testis. So the testis is a male gonad. It's a male gonad and it is homologous with the ovary in the female. It's a mobile organ and it lies in the each half of the scrotal sac. And what is the function of the testis? It includes the production of spermatozoa and secretion of the testosterone, which is also called as the dihydrotestosterone, which is a male hormone. And it is responsible for the development and maintenance of the secondary sex characters. So what is the shape and measurements? Coming to the shape, the sh it is an oval or ellipsoid in shape. Oval or ellipsoid in shape and it measures about 5 centimeters in length. 5 centimeters in length and around 2.5 centimeters in the breadth then we have the 3 centimeters along the anterior posterior diameter so this is about the shape and measurements and what is the position of the uh, position in the scrotum the testis is suspended in the scrotum by the spermatic cord and it lies obliquely so that its upper pole is slightly tilted forward and laterally like this and the lower pole, pole is tilted backward and medially it lies like this in the scrotum now coming to the external features of the scrotum uh, external features of the testis now let's discuss about the external features external features so what do we have in the external features the testis presents with two poles two borders and two surfaces we have two poles which is the upper pole and the lower pole and it has two borders which is nothing but as the anterior and the posterior border and then we have the two surfaces the medial and the lateral surface so the testis presents with the two poles upper and the lower pole two borders anterior and the posterior border and two surfaces medial and the lateral surface both the upper and lower poles are convex in nature they are convex and smooth and the upper pole provides attachment to the spermatic cord so the upper pole upper pole will provide attachment to the spermatic cord and the anterior border is rounded and completely covered by the tunica vaginalis and the posterior border is straight and covered only partly by the tunica vaginalis it also provides attachment to the epididymis and on the lateral aspect the epididymis is separated from the testis by the extension of the cavity of tunica vaginalis and it is called as the sinus of epididymis sinus of epididymis provides the attachment and both the medial and the lateral surfaces are smooth and slightly convex now we we'll look at the coverings of the testis we'll draw the testis to look at the external features so this is the testis it has a bulbous enlargement and the outer covering this is the head of the epididymis slightly goes like this let's name it this is the testis this is the head of the epididymis head of the epididymis this is the upper pole of the testis and this is called as the appendix appendix of testis and this part is the sinus sinus of the epididymis this is the anterior border and this is the lateral surface on other side we have the medial surface and this is the lower pole of the testis lower pole of the testis and this is the tail of the epididymis tail of the epididymis this is the ductus difference and this is the body of the epididymis and this is the posterior border so this is about the external feature of the testis now coming to the coverings coverings of the testis so the testis is covered by three coats one is the tunica vaginalis tunica vaginalis the other one is the tunica albuginea tunica albuginea and then we have the tunica vasculosa so these are the basic three coverings of the testis now let's uh, look uh, let's draw the testis and look at the coverings in detail 
I'm drawing the testes. So this is the outer covering, which is the skin. And just below the skin, what we have? We have the external spermatic fascia. We have the external spermatic fascia. Just below that, we have the cremasteric fascia. And below the cremasteric fascia, we have the internal spermatic fascia. And below the internal spermatic fascia, it extends like this. This is entirely covered. Don't worry, we'll name all of them. So, what are the coverings? Basically, the coverings are the parietal and the parietal and the visceral layers of the tunica vaginalis. Parietal and the visceral layers of the tunica vaginalis. These two. And then we have the tunica albuginea, tunica albuginea, then we have the tunica vasculosa. So these are the three major coverings and inside the vasculosa we have the artery supplying like this. Then we have some veins like this. This part is called as the mediastinum testis and somewhere here we have the artery to the vas difference and then we have the testicular artery here and this is about the transfer section of the testis. Basically what we need to understand here is, is the, the three coverings you need to remember the parietal and the visceral layers of the tunica vaginalis and then we have the tunica albuginea and the tunica vasculosa and outer to the tunica vaginalis we have the skin below the skin we have the external spermatic fascia and then the cremasteric fascia and the internal spermatic fascia. So if you know these layers it will be very helpful in the university UG exams and also for a better understanding. Now we will look at the uh, arterial supply venous drainage of the testis. So coming to the arterial supply, so what do you have in the arterial supply? The testis is mainly supplied by the testicular artery, testicular artery. The testicular artery, it arises from the abdominal aorta, abdominal aorta in the abdomen at the level of the L2 vertebra L2 vertebra so at the level of the L2 vertebra the branch from the abdominal aorta called the testicular artery will supply the uh, testis it passes downward and laterally to enter the deep inguinal ring and then it will traverse through the inguinal canal within the spermatic cord to reach the testis the anatomy of the inguinal canal is discussed in another anatomy video please make sure to watch that video so now let's discuss about the venous drainage venous drainage what we have in the venous drainage it is the pampini form plexus we have the pampini form plexus of veins which drain the uh, venous drainage of the testis this plexus will ascend up at the superficial inguinal ring and then it will condense to form the four veins which will pass through the inguinal canal within the spermatic cord and then on the right side the testicular vein will drain into the right side the testicular vein will drain into the inferior vena cava at an oblique angle and on the left side it will drain into the left renal vein left renal vein so this is an important viva question sometimes they might ask so the right side of the venous plexus will drain into the inferior vena cava and on the left side they drain into the left renal vein so this is about the arterial and the venous drainage of the testis coming to the lymphatic drainage lymphatics so the lymphatics from the testis is drained into the pre and pre and para aortic nodes para aortic nodes so the lymphatics from the testis will drain into the pre and the para aortic nodes so this is about the arterial supply venous drainage and the lymphatics of the testis now let's discuss about the clinical significance of the testis clinical significance of the testis so what do we have in the clinical significance firstly we will discussing about the hydrocele 
hydrocele so hydrocele is nothing but as it is accumulation of the fluid within the tunica vaginalis so the fluid will accumulate in the tunica vaginalis so the fluid may collect following the inflammation of the testis because tunica vaginalis is closely rela related to the front and side of the testis but mostly hydrocele is due to idiopathic reasons we don't know what is the cause so it mostly remains the idiopathic and the fluid from the tunica vaginalis can be removed by inserting a fine trocar and cannula through the scrotal skin we can easily remove the fluid so the cannula traverses through what structures firstly it will go through the skin and then the dartos muscle then we have the external spermatic fascia the cremastric fascia and the internal spermatic fascia and then we have the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis and between the parietal and the visceral layer the fluid will accumulate from there the fluid can be extracted so this is about the hydrocel now we will discuss about the varicocel varicocel what is varicocel it's a clinical condition in which veins of the pampiniform plexus will become dilated and tortuous the veins venous drainage i just discussed right these pampiniform plexus of veins they become dilated and they may become tortuous so when they become dilated and tortuous and they are elongated that is known as the varicocele so it commonly affects the adolescents adolescents and the young children it will affect affect in the adolescents and the young children so it uh, mo it mostly occurs on the left side due to the what reasons it uh, mostly mostly occurs on the left side because of uh, left testicular vein because left testicular vein drains at the right angle in the left renal vein and the venous pressure is high in the left testicular vein so because of that it may occur it may also occur due to compression of the left testicular vein by the loaded constipated uh, sigmoid colon or also because of the blockage of entry of the uh, left testicular vein into the left renal vein these all conditions may cause the varicocele so clinically varicocele presents as uh, vague dragging sensations or aching pain in the scrotum and on palpa palpation the veins of the pampiniform plexus will feel like a bag of worms so this is about the clinical condition of the varicocele now we will discuss about the tumors of the testis and torsion of the testis coming to tumors of the testis So what do you have in the tumors of testis? The two main varieties of testicular tumors are one is called as the seminoma, which is carcinoma of the seminiferous tubules, and another one is called as the teratoma, which is the malignant change in the totipotent cells. We have the A called as the seminoma, seminoma, which is the carcinoma of carcinoma of seminiferous tubules, seminiferous tubules. and then we have the b called as the teratoma what do you have in the teratoma it is malignant change in the totipotent totipotent cells totipotent cells will undergo malignant change that is called as the teratoma and another one is the sem uh, seminoma so the cancer cells from the testis spread upward via the lymph vessels to the lumbar the i told you that lymphatic drainage will drain into the pre and the parietic nodes right so it will go there and the lymph nodes at the level of the l1 l2 vertebra and produce secondary tumor in the abdomen so these may produce secondary tumor in the abdomen in the abdomen region so this is about the tumors of the testis now coming to the torsion of testis torsion so it is a clinical condition in which the rotation of the scrotum occurs around the spermatic cord so around the spermatic cord the testis will rotate around itself and it will uh, commonly affects the active young people and children and it is accompanied by severe pain all right guys if you have watched the video till the end please make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share it to your other friends who are in need of the anatomy thank you so much